Got the chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 62 of the Winter Hills podcast, sponsored by Chia Chart. This week, we talked to Elsie Davis. Uh, we chatted about her recent Ring of Steel victory and a victory at the Scarfell Pike Marathon, too. But first, are we pre or post? Swirl chocolate bar, Eddie. How are you doing? Yeah, I haven't even I haven't even cracked it open yet. It's just sitting here talking to me. Not good audio, is it? Chomping it's, on that. It's really good, mate. My, I just say we have a secret. Every parent has this, surely the secret biscuit chocolate stash that no children know exist. And they've just gone out for their um for their sport this afternoon. And I could I find the secret? I cannot find the secret Twix anywhere. I have found a twirl, but I'm not sure the twirl is gonna cut it. Too much chocolate, a not enough chocolate. not enough crunch. It's like a heavy flake, isn't it, really? A twirl. It's a heavy flake yeah. without the crumble. And a flake can only be eaten in an ice cream anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it there and I might come, I might, but I'm one of those people, this is so sad, but I could eat like a little bite of it and then I'll put it back. What? I know. I, I disappoint everybody, <laughs> everybody. Like Bryn, like it's almost divorce because he'll obviously like the box. That's a two and bite. I, that is. I, I literally have like a bite and be like, oh yeah, that's fine. I'll save that for, go in the fridge and then I'll forget about it. My little uh, treat secret hiding places my i've got like a little box where my gels and my isotonic things are you might find some peanut m&ms in there <laughs> oh i do love an m&m uh, uh, you know what we try and not eat so much palm oil and last time i checked the ingredients the palm oil is in the m&m so i've, I've not had any that's mm -hmm. just like nutella yeah, we don't eat nutella anymore we have no. some poor substitute jim jams i think we're on jim jams at the moment. <laughs> You just made that. Anyway, <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> Trying to find the chocolate. <laughs> um, what have I been up to? Oh, oh, all sorts. I mean, the I've had a. I can't go into details because honestly, it's just so dull for everybody listening. But we've had some palava, but we've got over it. Um, but I've managed to keep the running going. Um, I had our favourite three by five k progressive. Yeah, I saw um, that. And it was pretty. pretty I honestly. I procrastinated uh, about that. I, I played it quite well last week because I chose, we've had some beautiful alpine blue sky days. So I like moved my long runs so I could run on one of those days. But then I knew that that progressive run was going to get hit a bit because I would have 20 miles in my legs. Yeah. But I thought I'd prefer to do that in the wet than do um, 20 miles in the wet. Yeah. which I'm going to do in about two hours. So um, I moved it and then I said to Bryn, do you reckon I can do it in my road shoes? Because I was a bit tired. <laughs> and I and he, I was like, how muddy is the trail? And he was like, it's fine. Because he'd just taken it. It's fine. It's not that all <laughs> my life. So I ran down on the road and then I did this like loop round underneath this ski lift. And then you come up this track and I couldn't get traction oh up goodness. the track. And I ran past this guy. And by the third one, I was at that. <laughs> <laughs> and so there were like Sunday morning walkers out. Because obviously I'd left it a bit late because I'd been procrastinating. So there were quite a few people out walking the track. And this guy with French volleyball team on his jacket. So I was like, I'm going to really show him. <laughs> I ran past really fast. And I like just couldn't get any traction uh, and just went, ah. Uh, slam down on this stone oh. that'll learn me that'll learn me i said but considering that i wasn't in the, it was good yeah it was good i think i started off maybe a little slow so the progression's really good because i did the first one like maybe as a warm-up uh but there was you still really triggered me should i tell you it's, it, was a, it was an alarm bell when i saw it you'd separated your progressions into three different runs now do you know why i did that I don't like that. I know. I'm really sorry, but um, I have my heart rate monitor for my long run. Where my bag strap cuts underneath my boobs, sorry, Gary, right. it rubbed so bad. Ooh. It Bryn said it was almost to the bone. It wasn't, but it was so bad, the rawness that I had from my heart rate monitor strap, 
that I couldn't, I could hardly put, like, I couldn't sleep the night afterwards because I couldn't Ooh. lie on this terrible chaffing. You know, I honestly think I have some You're like head to toe chaffing. chaffing. <laughs> I'm chaffing. Like, I must have, I think it's my super rose English skin. <laughs> but honestly, the chaff, and it's, well, it's just that point of contact. Anyway, I couldn't put my heart rate monitor on, but then I really wanted to know that, how was I going to know that I was, because normally I just do those three things in the, my sort of three zones. Yeah, so I yeah. go 140, 150, 160. Yeah. Done. And I just glance at it every so often. The pace is irrelevant because it's yeah. on freaking rocks. So, but I, I was like, there's no, I, I mean, I love running, but I cannot put that heart rate monitor on my, could hardly put a sports bar on. I almost contemplated not wearing one, but that'd have been dangerous. <laughs> so I thought instead I'm going to just use it K and just, yes. just check every K. So I knew where every K was. Okay, but then I, when I did the first one, cause it was just under 5K, I thought I've got to have to stop to reset it to get the same, same yeah. point each time. All right. So that I'll is the off. reason I'm really sorry, but it was very useful for me. But also, you know what? Get over it. It's my Strava. I can put on oh, it when yeah, I want. You own it. I yeah. did think that. I was like, it's going to annoy people. But you know what? I'm using this. I'm not, I'm on this. I'm trying to train for God's sake. That's true. Anyway. No, but that was my story. big session. And I did another really nice. Um, oh, this is a good one. I did a nice, uh, I call it the flick flack, um, which I don't give to clients very much, but I should do because it really breaks down. Like it's a nice midweek sort of run where you do different paces. Okay. So you do like easy for a little chunk, steady, a little bit of hard, and then you go back to easy. And you just focus on, it doesn't matter what terrain you're running on. Yeah. And it's just purely by feel. Um, I like doing a bit of that, especially again, when you're tired, Yeah, just move you up through the gears. And then, yeah, I had a, I had a decent long run. I am feeling 20 miles or something, wasn't it? 21. Okay, I, don't sorry. I don't actually know how far it was. It was three hours with about just under a thousand meters. It was um, a bit icy, a bit cold. <clears throat> and to be honest, I was a bit blur about the whole thing it, I, I don't like to complain because it's first world problems but I'm gonna um when it was when I need to run instead of doing more vert there's really only one track I can run on and it's yeah. just I mean it's beautiful it's by this like alpine river yeah it's so beautiful but I must have run it eight billion times yeah and so I just can't find the joy in it. I just know every stone. I just know every bit. I just can't get my head out of the fact that I'm on the same bit of yeah, thing. Yeah. So normally I love long runs because I can go off, you know, climb mountains. But when I'm looking for a bit more actual running, yeah. uh, I found that mentally quite tough. And I also think where I, I'm just mentally a bit done. I'm done. Are you done this year? <laughs> not yet i think we all you made a good point we all do that no matter where you live when you're trying to maybe do a fast run or a hilly run you know there's always like that repetition um it's never like where i live we've got lovely trails nice flat trails but for a tarmac flat 5k no it's quite tricky but like now i just run the effort so it's the, the pace is on what i'd hope to do on the race day but the effort is definitely still the same so yeah, but yeah not done yet but you know what if anything I've, I've had a really stinking cold for about 10 days and um, I feel like I've come out of it. And just running yesterday, I thought, yeah, I feel like I've moved it up to a little, I'm probably about a seven, eight out of 10 now, I'm feeling. So it's good. That's great. I love it. What, tell me about your strength training. <clears throat> oh, I know, yeah. I still, you know, I thought I'd, I've retired, semi retired from YouTube, thought I'd get all this time back. But no, still, still need two strength sessions, which, I always prioritize my core and my uh, glutes and thighs. If I'm going to miss one, it'll be upper body. Um, but I'll get I see these pictures of me with like these skinny arms. So <laughs> it's like a vanity <laughs> reason why I do the upper body. Um, but luckily, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> if anything, I would, uh, I've got no aches or pains or niggles. So I don't want to jinx that. You know, this is why I do the strength and conditioning to stave off those ailments um but at the moment yeah the, I, I feel pretty good mobility wise and i am doing still form rolling and some mobility stretching so i can't it's not all about you know it's twice a week i'm still doing twice a week um consistently i'm just struggling with that third one a week did a nice trail run on sunday up the coast um and we had a bit of dog uh cow dog action with rex <laughs> 
how the dog action. It, it must be you because you keep Rex on the lead because yeah. like we meet mahoosive alpine cows, but yeah. the dogs just like scoot around them. I yeah. wouldn't. I don't think I'd get past them with them on the lead. I'd be terrified. Well, I just go through all the kind of brambles and stuff like that. It was, uh, they, they was, they're so friendly and, you know, it's a public footpath. So they, you know, everyone's entitled to be there, but um, there was three mothers with calf and they were either protective or just really curious. They, were, they weren't aggressive, but yeah, Rex just barked constantly. I was like, oh my goodness, mate. But um, can I just say, can you please put a picture on Facebook of Rex? Because that one you posted is the cutest dog I think I've ever seen. You're couple, cute, Gary, he? but Rex takes. <laughs> The He's much better than me. <laughs> yeah, more. You know what? It took me maybe twenty pictures just to get one where he was kind of looking at the camera. I was like Rex, 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 and he just wasn't interested. He's the squirrels and deer, everything. So he's far more interested in all that stuff. But yeah, more Rex. I'll try and do a bit more Rex. More Rex. More Rex. <laughs> what else do we do? Um, yeah, I think you mentioned it. You did ten times one K the other week, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna. Nick that I'm gonna have it. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa! Twenty yeah, yeah. euros. <laughs> 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can have it. Don't worry. Um, so uh, myself, Robbo, and Chris, we did that. And um, how uh, much recovery? Ninety seconds. Nice. Did you do them like progressive, or did you just do them all hard out? Well, it's a quite a undulating loop into headwind. So you know, they're all all the same effort. All this uh, zone. What sort falls. of pace we're we looking at here? Uh some would have been. Um, maybe about just over six minute miles i think some might have even been just under seven minutes depending on your direction you're running and stuff like that it's uh but depending that, on your excuse you're going to use for that yes but it's good you know chris and um rob or they you know they can move quite well too so it's a good session for us all you know also i listen to the inside running podcast um and Brody, i think it is um i don't know why i listen to this podcast three australian dudes talking about running an australian athlete but <laughs> i quite enjoyed you think he people say that in australia i'll listen to this actually yeah i think they do <clears throat> i'll listen to this like crazy english <laughs> podcast <laughs> i was just putting crack. a few tinnies and uh some uh what do they put on the barbie yeah, yeah, shrimp on the barbie. Some shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> but he did 10 times a kill with 90 seconds too, so I thought, oh, that's validated. It. Super Coach Eddie and Brody from Inside Running Podcast are doing it. So, was it Brody? One of them, anyway. One of them. Um, <laughs> and then what else did we do? We had the oh, Cross Country on Saturday. Um, that was awesome. Sedgefield still top of Sedge Division Field. 3. Sedgefield. And I scored points again, which... Stop I, it. I know, I love it. Um, you know, firmly in the slow pack. I mention this every week, kind of drag myself down. I can't but believe you're in the snow, slow pack. I think a, if I... A three-hour marathoner. Yeah, I think if I raced it, maybe... Well, I've been in the medium pack before. Fresh. Yeah, if I, I could get in the medium pack. But I treat them like a real good... I'm shattered at the end of it. So, you know, I'm not going to uh, play it down. I am tired, but I never... I don't treat them as a race... Um, but yeah, when I score, I must admit, I do enjoy scoring for the team. And it was really nice. Um, there's a bunch of us. Uh, and one of the guys, David Walker in Sedgefield, Harry is, he's pipped me every uh, race so far. He's, he's, he's just scored ahead of me. And on Saturday, I managed to, to hold, hold hold him up. I was just waiting. When's, when's Dave going to come? When's he going to come? <laughs> and he never did. So I was really chuffed uh, with that. So, yeah, if you listen to Dave. Uh, Mil, get Mil, him next um, time, Dave. Get him next time. <laughs> Mill, another guy. Uh, he's I've never managed to catch Mill yet. So, yeah, if you listen to Mill, I'm coming. I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't start eliciting threats on the podcast. <laughs> well, it's Mill. It's a family um, show. Yeah, he... he from a you know he, he doesn't live close to me so i never really train with him apart from on a thursday occasionally um he during lockdown you know while a lot of people were going to pieces he his running came on leaps and bounds um, i think i guess 37 or 38 10k he did which um yeah massive improvement so it's going to be hard to catch mill because he's in a lot better shape than me over six miles um so yeah he's he's running really well too and i think just over 80 miles for the week so i don't know what my elevation was probably not great to be honest not really looked at that um so yeah all right Pretty all good. on all on course for valencia do you think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're all you know what? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good Brilliant. I still don't know what to go for. Do I go for <clears throat> just a three hours? I'm just no way. I will be disappointed if you go for three hours. Goodness. Yeah. But a PB is another. It's, I've got to find six minutes from somewhere. So that's a lot. 
Would you set off on PB Pace and see what happens? <laughs> I think I probably will, yeah. Yeah, yeah you will. <laughs> yeah, you will. But then that could change a 259 into a 320. If it doesn't matter. You've no, got to anyway, throw matter. those chips in, see what happens. I'll send you a twirl. Yes, I need more than that. Need some uh, Morton gels. <laughs> <laughs> right, races. I heard it was a bit windy in England this weekend. Oh, my God. The Wet and wild, feel. Wet yes. and windy. What happened? What did um, I guess there was cancellations? Yeah, two races cancelled. That uh, were probably loads cancelled to be honest. But Olds Water Way was cancelled, and oh. um, yeah, and I saw some people who just had their own adventure because you know they booked the time off, booked accommodation yeah. and stuff like that. So I think from that point of view, you could do it because you're not trying. The, there's no logistics of hundreds of people and car parks and marshals and safety crew and stuff like that. So yeah, I imagine the trails were probably okay to be on in some parts, but. The rest of it wasn't so, and then also day two of the Lulworth Cove running challenge was cancelled too. They managed to get day one done, but I think the forecast was um, sixty mile an hour plus winds and heavy rain. And you know, it's it's coastal paths, and you don't mm. want to be going. <laughs> you, <No. don't. laughs> you really don't. So good call by everybody. And I imagine you know. Saturday and Sunday morning, there'll be a few uh, curtains twitching and they're quite happy the race had been postponed at least. I think uh, Olds Waterway is rescheduled for March. I could be uh, maybe wrong. But one person that didn't uh, let the weather put her off was uh, previous guest, Sarah Perry, who had a successful Wainwright's Coast to Coast FKT. Two days, seven hours, 26 minutes and four seconds. And I really hope a little bit of all, all the weather looked horrendous that maybe that little uh, <clears throat> westerly wind on her back helped uh, at some point um but the pictures i saw around cumbria area were pretty waterlogged so yeah hoods up and tights and gloves and everything but she had a great crew i was just saw a picture of spring of g i saw tim out there too uh photographed all this so yeah well done sarah and i did see i checked the date it's on the, actually on the fkt website so it is official well done. amazing oh, amazing God. and uh i'm so pleased that it's official fkt after yeah. all her endeavors yeah this week, we catch up with Eleanor Davis um, after her recent Ring of Steel win. Since recording, she's been over to the Azores competing in the Golden Trail series finale, which is three stages over three days uh, and grabbed from her Instagram post. It equaled 57 miles, 20 thousand feet of climbing four ferries and eight blood blisters she oh. finished third overall and therefore qualified for the world golden trail series next year so huge kudos um to her for doing that and here we go here's our interview with eleanor davis <laughs> And welcome to the show, Eleanor Davis. How are you? Where are you? And have you been for a run today? Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> I'm in Stockport in my bed. <laughs> See, my family are here to stay, so I'm just hiding here for this podcast. Uh, and no, not just yet. I haven't been for my run. My wife ran the Manchester Marathon yesterday, so Ooh. I was spectating, which is really tiring. <laughs> so <laughs> so tiring. <laughs> my legs were more tired after that than any training I've done all week. Um <sighs> I hope I you didn't whine going, oh, day. I'm really tired after watching you all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the logistics of Manchester? I know it's, it's some marathons, it's quite easy to kind of watch it at a certain point of the race and pop up somewhere else. Is it quite a friendly marathon like that? Yeah, it's brilliant. I saw her in six places. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <Good>. yeah. <laughs> did she have the race she, she'd hoped for? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, she ran well. It was her first one. Uh, she did 3.34. Oh, awesome. And a first yeah. marathon. Yeah, it's, it's faster than my first marathon. My first marathon was like 347, I think. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was faster than my second marathon. So she's gone in <laughs> the faster debut than me. <laughs> how, how does she feel today? 
she's fine. And she went, yeah, she did, she got in after me. Like she went out for drinks with her friends after. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she's she was out till like eleven, which is late for me. Um, oh. And she, uh, yeah, she seems fine. She's fine. It sounds like you've um, relocated recently. I remember on a marathon talk a podcast I listened to. Craigie, it must be over 12 months ago now. You were based down in Cornwall. Is that relatively recently you've moved up north? Uh, yeah, so I've, I'm from Cornwall. I grew up there. Um, and then we moved here. We both got jobs here. Me and my wife were both doctors, and you have to move around the country quite a lot yeah. with that. So um, we got jobs up north, but we didn't mind because we're both from, like, down south. And although it's very nice, it's quite isolated in a way um yeah. in terms of getting to races and and even traveling abroad like the nearest good airport it's not even that good as exeter yeah um, so <laughs> it, and, and it has just been brilliant because it's kind of it's given sarah's an a and e doctor so she, there's a bit more sort of going on for a new, yeah. a new well, consultant in that job in manchester and then i'm a gp trainee um so i'll be here for at least five years doing my yeah. training for that um, yeah, it's nice because you're so close to like the lakes, the yeah. peaks, the it's not far to get to Snowdonia and um, yeah. uh, Yorkshire more. So yeah, I re really like being here. And also, I'm sort of I'm part of a talent hub in Leeds, so I've got access to sort of physio and um, and like, my coach is there. And so sort of the access to all of that sort of stuff is is better from here and and races <laughs> and like. If you want to like go abroad racing, it's much easier. So yeah, that's yeah, good for now. But uh, <laughs> I think we'll end up back there for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. I used to live um, in Gloucestershire for a while, and yeah, uh, as soon as I had a family, actually, I just wanted to go back to the north. It was really bizarre. <laughs> I enjoyed yeah. it down there, but yeah, it seems no like family. At home, is there? <laughs> yeah. I'd love to go back, actually, to, like I mentioned earlier, I'd listened to an interview on Marathon Talk, and I did listen to it recently. I thought I'd refresh myself. And um, our listeners may not know much about you, apart from more recently to the Scarfell Pike Trail Race and uh, the uh, Ring of Steel. But, yeah, if you could give a bit of a background. I know you mentioned about your the kind of first marathon time. I'd love to know a bit more about your journey as a marathon runner now ultra running trails yeah uh not ultra I, <laughs> 27 <laughs> miles scarfell isn't it <laughs> uh yeah so i i did a lot of running at school like cross country um but was very much kind of um the last counter in in our school team um so i was like in a way i was made to feel like really important and part of that team so it sort of kept me going but i was yeah. by no means um very talented i just enjoyed it so i think for that sort of like because we still were trained we still trained sort of three four times a week but I, so i think that gave me sort of the discipline i've got now and we had really nice coaches which kept me interested um and i guess because i wasn't that good i didn't have so much pressure and i enjoyed it a lot more yeah um and then i kind of i did i did drift away from it a little bit when i went to college and um discovered going out and things like that and um, I guess because I didn't have the talent, I didn't feel like that I had to keep going at it. Yeah. Um, but I was still, I still would go out for a run every now and again. And then I sort of got to, I was it like, I remember how old I was when I did my first marathon, maybe 21 or something. And I just wanted to do it. It's like a bucket list thing. So my dad sort of, he does loads of running. He's really, he's sort of, he's a sort of a master at getting under three hours for a marathon. So, um, and he was quite keen to get me, to well stop me going out drinking so much <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah he kind of, we kind of did our long runs together and I did my first one you know like, I think when I was about 21 and that was Paris Marathon and I did it in that yeah like I said three about 347 which I was really chuffed with to get yeah. four hours running on a hangover most of the time so <laughs> um and then you just get the bug don't you after that you can't you can't stop at one um yeah. I mean even Sarah my wife today was saying she wouldn't rule out another now <laughs> and that was just going to be her one um and then it just went from there so I just kept I just thought oh, I'll just do another one in a different um city to like travel so I did I did then did Milan uh in like 337 and then I did Berlin I think in 318 or 19 and then I did London in 258 that still was kind of just with th running free I was doing a bit more like faster stuff, I guess, with that one, but no like structured training. And then okay. I got a coach and dropped down to 242 with a coach. Yeah. Um, and then 
I had a lot of injuries and then switched coach um and then around 233 recently which was it was a long road getting to that one from 243 yeah. <laughs> so it seems like a big drop but there's about five marathons that I trained for in that period where I, I didn't get to the start line for many reasons injury and illness so yeah that was a a good one for me and then I guess um the pandemic really happened after that uh I was due to do London which I was in a, because it because it got because it was cancelled quite like close right. um I think we were about four three three or four weeks out and I was like in the shape of my life <laughs> yeah. and, you know I was probably you know that got, I was hoping to get under 230 for that one um and yeah it got it got cancelled and then I kept training for like you know like you got in that time period when um you kind of were training for these races and then they just kept getting cancelled so you oh, then train for something else and it just never ended so you didn't get any rest and I ended up getting and then I ended up getting a stress fracture in that time. Um, yeah. And that was really gutting because I got selected to run for Great Britain for the first time at that around that time. Oh, so I was just like, you know, it couldn't have been worse timing. And that that and that was the one race that did go ahead, the World Half Marathon Championships. Yeah. <laughs> which was typical. Um was that, one, was that in Poland, the uh, half marathon? So it, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I qualified off the big half for that one. Um, and I got the reserve. I was a reserve, but then someone dropped out. So then they called me up and I was I was out on my bike. So I remember it quite clearly. And they called I got the call up and I was because I was so I had my stress fracture. I was just like sat on the side of the road just weeping. <laughs> I rang like I tried to ring my wife and then my dad, no one was picking up. So I got oh. I, I really didn't want to carry on cycling, but I had to. It was probably one of the most miserable bike rides in my life, but um, yeah. yeah, so that that got me to there. And then um, I guess from that, like, and maybe a little bit before that, because I've had a few stress fractures, I kind of enjoy running in, in the hills a bit more when I'm coming back from injury. Um, yeah. And I guess that's where I kind of started leaning towards mountain trail sort of stuff. Uh, a little bit of being fed up with, the road and it breaking me <laughs> and, yeah. and um, did you pinpoint what the um problem was with the stress factors why you you said you had kind of a few stress factors did you kind of ever find out what it was and modified your training or yeah um no <laughs> we never found it so I've, I've had lots of i've had like dexa scans which obviously checks the thickness of your bones i've had blood tests um i've, I've seen dietitians i you know there's no kind of um dietary or or, or or um like physical reason yeah. why <laughs> my tibia abode um so that's a possible possible reason but i think just um it may be a kind of relative energy deficiency because of the work i was doing at the time i was working okay. in the hospital as well so i'm kind of on my feet all day and then trying to run i was at the time trying to run like 90 to 100 mile weeks as well yeah. Um, and I think no matter how much you put in and fuel your body, sometimes it's just never going to be enough for the amount oh, yeah. you're doing in and around running. Um, so, and then the second, the, this most recent stress fracture, I got another stress fracture coming back on the, on like the eighth, like the, my, week eight of return to running, even though I did it completely strictly to plan, I got a, a one on top of that. Oh my goodness. So um, I just thought, I just can't, I thought that was really going to be the end of my career. I thought for some reason my bones are just crumbling like biscuits yeah. and um, I just, no, I couldn't, I didn't know why, so there wasn't a reason I could, yeah. there wasn't anything I could work on from where I was standing to change it. Um, so I was just absolutely gutted and at one point, I was like thinking about going and doing just mountain biking because I got yeah. into that a lot when I was injured. Um, but I sort of sat down with the sports medicine doctor and he sort of said, well, you know, the only option really is to cut your miles. Like you can't, you, for whatever reason, you can't do that amount of miles. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, I haven't really looked back since that. It's, I didn't think I'd be able to be competitive with not as many miles because everyone kind of, <laughs> wears it like a badge of honor don't oh, it? Like, right. yeah. it and like <laughs> you kind of round it up because you want to like <laughs> it look better um so I just but I was kind of inspired by like Steph Davis you know that um who runs marathons and um Beth Potter as well the triathlete they mm. do very little mileage and do really well so um I was kind of inspired by that and thought and was given a bit of like uh reassurance that you might be able to yeah yeah it's worked out really well so I've cut my miles in half and I use the bike loads um yeah. either mountain or road bike 
and you can actually train more hours because you can go out on your bike for as long as you want. Um, and it's, not, it's a good way I can cycle with my wife as well because she does a bit of cycling. So yeah. um, we have a Watt bike, which helps in the winter. Lovely <laughs> 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 need a sponsor, ready? A Watt bike or, or a Peloton sponsor. That'd be wicked, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm addicted to Swift because I love racing the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help myself. It's dangerous, yeah. isn't it, Swift? To get carried away, you can't help if but it, get. If it's a recovery ride, I have to cover up the screen, so I can't, yeah. I can't see anything apart from where I'm going. Otherwise, so yeah. Sven Schlockson or something comes past and goes, "Ride on!" and then no. ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really hard not to get caught up in it, isn't it? Uh, I, and it, um, it's one of the reasons why I really wanted you to come on the show because it's so refreshing to hear. The this, this slight tale of woe and your your journey, <laughs> but to hear where it's going from now is so exciting. We've read your results out, like we do a little results section, and you, we suddenly well, you appeared, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> well, where's she come from? She can run the trails really fast. Um, and so can you tell us a little bit about what ignited that move onto the trail, and then you entered, is it Scaffold Pike was your first big one this season? Yeah, I did one in uh, Switzerland, actually. Uh, of course I did, the um, Eiger. Eiger Ultra Trail, yeah. Ultra. Um, it wasn't the ultra distance, it was 35 kilometres. But um, that was kind of just um, as prep for scaffold because I wanted to qualify for the GB team for Thailand. So I just wanted to practice fueling and stuff. Um, so, yeah, so in terms of getting into the trail running, I suppose like, being from Cornwall, I've always run on the coast path. Yeah. But I never really appreciated how well I could run on trail because I was just used to it um and then I went to Font Rameau in the Pyrenees which is where a lot of the road runners go to altitude training and um my now good friend Ali Dixon was there and I remember we went on a few trail runs and she was like she commented on how like naturally and easily I run up and down the hills yeah. um, so I guess in, and until you like run with other people on them you don't really realize or know so I kind of like sparked a bit of an interest um and uh I got back from there I wasn't I, again I was coming, this was a few years ago I was again coming back from an injury and I thought oh I'll just um enter the like the the mountain championships the short the shorter one and I sort of saw the other girls' times on paper, like, you know, as a roadrunner, you look at power 10 and I was like, oh, this will be easy. I'll smoke him. Like, <laughs> and I thought, I've never been so humbled in all my life, that race. I was like, I mean, I was off altitude as well. And I wasn't in terrible, you know, I did a 30, I think I did a 30, four minute 10K the week before. So that's the kind of sh shape I was in. Yeah. Um, and I went and did this race and I got about, not even a mile up the hill I just wanted to callop and butt the ball and roll back down I was like I, I've never been through so much agony in all my life as that race and I don't know how I I fell over at the end and hit my head because I was so knackered oh wow um and yeah it was really like okay like this is impressive I was like yeah, these like like hidden kind of like mega athletes that like no like it's kind That's of a good way to describe them yeah. <laughs> but they're so like um it's just like really it's just I don't know it's just like a really different environment but it's just so impressive um you know these fell runners are just hardcore it's like <laughs> but so but I wasn't I wasn't put off by it I just thought you know you can't just turn up to these things and do well because you're fast on road it that doesn't um it doesn't like it's not the same at all it's completely different muscles going up at like 20 30 percent incline yeah. um yeah my calves were just oh, I, I like that feeling i can't i can't forget it um so yeah i did i did that and then i kind of did put it put it back in a box um but thought i, I thought i'd probably be better at the longer stuff as well uh, than the shorter stuff so I guess that's why I went back to to like the the longer trail stuff um and then I yeah I got back into it off the back of the injury before I was like right I put marath road marathons in the bin for a bit and uh yeah. <laughs> give give the long trail stuff a go um yeah and it's really good <laughs> <laughs> Let's, can we talk a little bit about, um, well, your experience in Austria, how how did that go? It's like your first international 
trail race. I read, I, I can't remember, was it on Instagram something about you not using poles and them all using poles? Yeah, <laughs> I panicked so much because I saw in all the pictures everyone was had the poles and I'd never used them. And I, I messaged my friend uh, and he was like, I don't know, it's probably not a good idea if you've not used them, your yeah. body's not used to it, you'll end up using energy. But I, I panicked, bought some anyway, obviously. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I and then I read online that last minute, and they quite, they're quite expensive, aren't they? So I read online last minute that you can't take them on your hand luggage and I hadn't got any checked luggage. So oh. then I had to leave them at home. And I was like, right, well, I'll just have to run without them. <laughs> I was in the first, so like there was, you know, they're proper big hills, aren't they, in in like Switzerland and that. So it's like, you know, you'll get back to back, to back miles with mo- more than a thousand feet in, which you don't yeah. often get in the UK. But um, I was in like third place, for third or fourth place up the first climb. And I was like, these girls, they just got their poles, they're walking. And I, I was like, run it, because I like just kept like, I don't like really like walking up the hills. Like, even if I'm getting the same pace, I prefer kind of keeping that rhythm. Yeah. And I was like, I'm running the whole way. And these girls are walking <laughs> and they're like, just cruising it. Um, but, you know, I think having my hands free meant I could, obviously I saved energy because I don't use them. And also I could get my fuel in properly. Yeah. And then after the first hill, I was just off and away after that. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't, I was, I was kind of glad I didn't have to cart them around because I don't think <laughs> I would have been able to use them very well anyway. Uh, but I won a pair at the end as well, so now I've got oh. two pairs. <laughs> you and a wife, you can go polling together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I bother with them in the future. I, I guess you have to practice with them. I, I think for the shorter think. races, I, I wear it as a badge of honour that I'm not going to use them on anything more than... Anything less than 40k, I'm like, no. Yeah. I, I, I think I've got to be running. Got to yeah. be running. And as soon as I get my poles out, it's like my brain goes, hiking! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of it, but uh, like you, Elna, I don't have them. And then I get this panic about a week before a race. And I think, well, I'm not going to learn how to use them now in in, in a week. So I never, I don't, I don't yeah. bother. But I think, yeah, definitely as, as the as I'm getting older, I think, um, yeah, I think I could do with them. <laughs> Over a hundred miler, I think, yeah, some poles would be quite nice. Just a lean on or something. Yeah, I think for sure. in like more ultra ones. Downhill, the downhill. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Save your legs on the downhill. Yeah. Um, so let's go on to Scaffold Pike Marathon. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that race, how it panned out? I saw a video of the finish, looked epic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, it, went, it went off quite fast and I felt really unwell like the first mile, but it's because I didn't, because it was 27 miles of mountain, I didn't want to warm up and I normally would do a bit of a warm up. <laughs> so the first mile was flat, but it, it was, I probably felt the worst in that, that first mile. And it was hectic as well because everyone was, it was really narrow and then there was like gates. So everyone was like fighting to get to the gate. Oh, and then wow. there was just like, <laughs> uh, But when, once we sort of, once it settled down a bit because it was flat the first I managed to get quite a decent lead um, and I think Kirsteen Welch stayed with me for for a little while um, but I because it because of being like a, a more of a road, flat runner it that sort of pace didn't tire me out at all before I got to the hill I was kind of comfortable yeah. in that sort of um, tempo so um, and then yeah I knew the hill because you know I'm still more um, I guess my strength in the mountain races is when it's flat or downhill because of my road speeds. Um, yeah. But I managed just to hold off uh, the other runners up to the top of the hill. And I knew sort of if I could get to the top of the hill, I'd be okay. So after that, I kind of just um, put my foot on the gas a bit going down. Um, I was quite paranoid about twisting my ankle because it's pretty sketchy on the scaffold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it's a um, place to run, really. Yeah, it's not very nice. It's very technical on top. Um, so I was just relieved to get to the bottom. Um, and my wife's just not used to me smiling in races. So, um, and I do in mountain running. I just, I must enjoy it way more because I'm smiling. Yeah. <laughs> like road marathons are just like, it's hard to compare them because it's so, so different. Pressure. But I don't feel like I, well, I know I don't smile unless it's the last hundred meters. Um, <laughs> so she enjoyed the spectating a bit more. And then, yeah, the last bit of scaffold was, again, flat. So um, I think I managed to get quite a bit more of a lead there and pick off some of the guys who were dropping off as well. So that was a good confidence boost. But, yeah. It looked but... like, as the race, you seemed to get a lead maybe just over a minute, but then the last the last split, 
it seemed to increase by about 10 minutes. So yeah, you had a real kind of strong finish uh, to, to the end of the race. It looked great. Yeah, I just, with the long stuff, I just feel, I, I just feel like I can keep going and going, but I think I'm, I've gotten quite good at fueling as well because I've, because of my marathon training, you, you do a lot of practice with that and I've, I've got access to a, a new, like a dietitian. So we, we, we had like a, a strolling, a fueling strategy and I'd practice yeah. quite a bit. But I do think that that is really crucial in the mountains because you burn through energy like crazy. Like yeah. I've, I, 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 if I go out for a 20 mile run on the road, I can do it easy without anything. But in the mountains, it, I just like you bonk so badly. <laughs> So I just, yeah, I, I was really on it with uh, fueling and I find I use Morton and I, I, it's again, it's more of a, a road yeah. um, kind of fueling drink that like Elliot Kipchoge uses, but it is brilliant. And it it's really like, I find you can tolerate loads of it without feeling really sick. Well, I can anyway, it's because it's, it's sugary, but it doesn't taste like, I don't know, they normally make them quite fruity and things. Yeah. So um but uh, yeah, so I found, I found, I found, I think that does help making sure. And you do the, because I know they have the gels and the drink, you do the whole kind of nutrition system with, with more. Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm out, if I'm out training though, I'll just try and eat like normal foods. Cause yeah. I don't, like I worry about what all that sugar does to your innards. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, just like rot yeah. on the inside for like, I think it's all right for racing, but I just, yeah. My my medical brain like doesn't like the thought of all that like sugar rinsing. I, I had to go to the dentist the day after an ultra last week, and my gums were like raw from having just from like tapping in the sugar for a yeah. whole, whole day. And she was like, "Oh, you're brushing too hard on your gut. Yeah. Look at your gums." And I was like, too scared to go. <laughs> no, it's like eight hundred liters of tailwind and gels. Yeah, yeah, they go wow. mad if they knew. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm curious, did you end a um, Scarfell Pike Marathon with the ringing steel in, of steel in mind, or was it just a, a happy coincidence? Because I think from winning that, you got an entry then into the ring of steel. Is that correct? Yeah, no, God, I'd never choose to do the ring of steel um, without. <laughs> <laughs> I literally did it just so I could go to the Azores. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, there was the option, because obviously the one in Switzerland was part of the Salomon Golden Trail series too. So I could have got a golden ticket if I went over and did two other races in that yeah. area, but it would have meant doing three more abroad. But I almost wanted to do that more more than do the ring of steel I think I, I would have too <laughs> yeah. yeah I kept looking at YouTube clips and being like oh my god I'm not ready for this this is too much because I'm scared of I'm just scared of like heights and I just freak out and you had to sign this like death waiver before which I've never had to do um and that was really? freaking me out and every time I like, looked at it and I was just like I messaged the, the guy like who who sent the invite and I was like look I I, I almost like I nearly backed out loads. <laughs> I thought, it just looks so scary. Um, so, yeah. is it so I've always, never done it. Is it super technical as a as a race? Yeah. Oh my god. Like yeah. So yeah. It's just there's no apart from the first and last bit on the road. There's nothing really runnable on there. Um, Wouldn't enjoy it's that. It's just like steep climbs, and then the top is sheer drops. So I just like just <laughs> hanging to the edges and um yeah it was it was an experience i'm not sure i'd rush back to do but, but what an amazing <laughs> transferable skill set you have that you can run a 232 marathon and then still cling to ridges <laughs> and keep the speed well you get an idea how tough it is it's about 29 k isn't it i think and your time was what four hours uh, it was just over four hours so that gives you an idea of how fast you're moving over that terrain but I think you you won the race by thirty five seconds. Was I've, I've never been in that kind of t type of event where I've been the, the the margin between front and second is is that tight? Were you together all the way? Was were you racing from the start, or I just been fascinated how the, how it panned out? Yeah, so um, we ran most of the way together. We were chatting because actually, like, although it's hard in your muscles, like cardiovascularly. You, I felt fine so we were having a good chat and like getting to know each other a little bit but I I I like led the whole way so I was and she just tucked in behind and then she just <laughs> she turned around to me at like uh, near the top of the second climb and said right I'm gonna push on now <laughs> like, all right <laughs> and then she was gone and then I was a bit like and then I was all right and then 
I just had a word with myself. I was like, no, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> so I was just like, I was like, right, you've done this in training. It's like a fart leg. You've just got to, and when it, when you're going up like 20, 30% climb, it's really hard to put an effort yeah. in when you're already knackered and that my legs were like shot. Um, but I just thought, right, you've just got to put this effort in and just go past her and just don't look back. So yeah. I, I managed just to catch up with her and then she just really dropped back. Like when I, when I did that, cause I guess she thought she'd take me off and then, um so it worked kind of like psychologically <laughs> but then she much she was catching me really fast in the downs because obviously it was again i think she does she did she said she does quite a bit sky running so she's used to the terrain um, okay and my shoes weren't ideal I, I wore like probably not great shoes for that race so a few people told me afterwards um they, they weren't vapor flies no <laughs> <laughs> no god <laughs> um so yeah, I was like, I twisted my ankle loads because I was panicking, like because I knew she was catching. And then yeah, but even the even the road section where uh, she was she was gaining on me on the road, I think, because I was just absolutely I had cramp. I was at, like, oh, my wow. legs didn't recover for like nearly a week. It was like oh, the wow. worst my legs have ever felt after a race. Yeah. <laughs> just I guess it's I guess it's like encouraging because it means there's lots more yeah. like conditioning yeah. to get better. So. But yeah, it was quite a stressful race. Um, and I nearly dropped her halfway as well because she didn't take any water with her on her back. Um, and she had to stop at the checkpoint. So I was like, right, this is my chance. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like being like a, in in a in like like a zombie movie where you think you've killed a zombie, but then it reappears. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm calling her a zombie, you know, but do you know what I mean? Like I kept thinking, right, this, this, this is it. Thank like, God I can take now. some Morton on at last. <laughs> yeah. <God>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was quite fun because the last few races, it's not really been a race. It's just been trying to run hard. But um, yeah, yeah, it's always fun to have a bit of a race as long as you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <fantastic. laughs> so that, that race then meant you've booked your tickets now to go to Azor. Is that how you say it? Azor's, yeah. So when is that? Not long, is it? Yeah, it's next. Uh, so I go next week. A week. Uh, yeah, in a week I fly out. Yeah. Are you going to be the only non-Salomon sponsored athlete there? <laughs> yeah yeah maybe i don't Ooh. know <laughs> yeah <laughs> what what does that involve do you know yet oh a lot of running it's um, <laughs> is it lots of days again I don't think my coach my coach is obviously my coach is a an, like a, a retired olympic steeplechaser so she's a bit like you know what's going on <laughs> wow. she's like, when i sent her the video of like ring of steel she was like oh my god like <laughs> what <laughs> I mean she but you know we're both learning as well so it's good um but yeah so it's she, she was asked so what day is the race on and I like this was yesterday and I said oh it's uh Friday Saturday and Sunday <laughs> and it's 30 kilometers each day uh, oh is it that long each day yeah it's really it's a long way so um yeah I'm just gonna take it like pretty easy I think on the first just just kind of yeah not race it the first day and, and just get yeah it. right we've just heard your race story <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm not a race as long as i win <laughs> and are you camping out in between days or do you go back to hotel oh no no camping <laughs> uh we've got a hotel yeah Oh. Yeah, it's on different islands. That'd be quite cool. I think like each day is a different island. Um, yeah. They're point to point races. So uh, the first day is all uphill, which is good because I suppose it doesn't trash trash your legs. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, that and then yeah, and then the other days. But yeah, it's quite. They are quite hilly. Yeah, I think you'll do amazing, and with your marathon strength as well, you're only going to get stronger. Yeah, ho hopefully. Keep that Morton. <laughs> keep that Morton going in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be half woman, half Morton by the end of it all. But... That's the best. That's a, just don't go to the dentist. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about how you um, have juggled becoming such a successful athlete along with your... I've written doctoring. I'm not sure if doctor can be a verb. Doctoring, can it be a verb? Yeah, yeah, what you mean? Training and doctoring. Um, are you working? Are you carrying on doing your GP training at the moment as well as juggling the training? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, so yeah. I'm a GP trainee, so but I work sixty percent of a full time rotor. Um, so as a GP trainee, that's that's quite good because a lot of the a lot of the training is teaching. So you know, on a Tuesday, I do I work three days a week, but two of those are half days because the afternoon is like teaching on like zoom or something so it's pretty relaxed um and 
although I've got a few hospital jobs left as my training um, where you do do nights after in a year or so I won't do any more nights ever unless I choose to do out of hour GP which will be nice <laughs> um so yeah it's, when I was an F1 when I was like a junior junior doctor I was doing full-time and trying to do these 100 mile weeks or whatever and I, I got a buzz from like you know managing to do it all but I was just proper sick all the time I just used to catch all like norovirus and yeah uh, a flu I remember I drove to a race in Leeds once and this is running for England um and I had norovirus when I was there and I didn't realize till a mile in and then I was like something doesn't feel right and then just yeah I was really poorly <laughs> I was like more like <laughs> that was Cornwall to Leeds and then you yeah I had to drive all the way home and it took oh. me like 12 hours <laughs> I was really wow. like, <laughs> I was like, really upset, obviously, because the race was like, um, you know, I was running for England and I felt really like, like I'd let everyone down and I was just really unwell as well. So feeling even more sorry for myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, so do so. you feel now you've got like kind of the balance right between, yeah, the training and being able to just conserve that little bit of vital energy to let the training be absorbed? Obviously you have, because the results are speaking for themselves, but must yeah, be a definitely. learning process probably still is as well yeah and I think you can't underestimate how much like um kind of emotional fatigue can 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 put stress on your body and I guess in that sort of job um some days can be really full-on and um you sort of listen and carry lots of other people's problems and um you know that it it can and, and I think without realising, you become quite immune to it because you sort of do it every day. But I think without realising it, it can be quite big stress on the body. And like, think probably what my cortisol levels are at work is high. And then I go for a run and they stay high. And then it just probably ends up. Yeah, it just never comes down. Whereas most people that are <laughs> yeah. trying to run, they go to work to like Gary to drink tea and relax. Yeah. <laughs> drink a lot of tea. <laughs> do you ever, I was curious, do you ever think you would take the plunge in a like, full time athlete? Or are you happy with the. The mix oh no no way no i <laughs> I, 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 I like i i, I really like my job I, I i got i got into med school and like, like it was something that i'd worked really hard to do yeah. um i was told i, I wouldn't like my teacher i was, wasn't clever enough and stuff and i worked really hard for it and it's something and actually i love going to work and that's another benefit of not working full time is that when i'm there i enjoy it and not burn yeah. out and things so i've got a good balance i think I think if you were a full-time athlete or if you get injured, it's like the like toll on your mental health would be way higher. And yeah. um, at least, you know, at least when I'm injured now, I can kind of, you know, get, get involved with other stuff at work and, yeah. and, and not dwell on things too much. Um, so, yeah. And I supported Eddie did the Solomon joke <laughs> yeah i'm oh, yeah. gonna sign now with salmon and i guess to edit the podcast going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i supported by any brands that morton's not cheap i hope they're sending you that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they, yeah they do yeah hey. <laughs> <laughs> you have to yeah on an exchange with a bit of social media stuff we, they yeah. send me that, but yeah yeah it's expensive isn't it i actually didn't know how much it was and i checked the other day um and yeah, <laughs> yeah i'll do a post for you for that <laughs> <laughs> we'll tag them in on this too and they'll be like yeah. another if, box to LC yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> going for it now I do I, and it, I'm not just saying it because they send it free I do think it's it's good stuff but um, well I hoped the London Marathon Expo that's what I was banking on buying some Morton and it yeah. all gone by the time I got yeah. there their well, gels were a bit funny at first they like bit, like you think they're quite chewy but actually they come out like kind of solid like almost half solid so you don't get all sticky fingers um uh -huh. You know, the other stuff, it kind of like falls over your fingers, but... Oh, goodness me, yeah. That's yeah. half the fun of it. It's like to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Stickiness uh, everywhere. <laughs> so Do you remember yeah. a couple of years ago, the London Marathon, they try a little Lucozid ball that you pop, popped in your mouth and it just, you, you bit on it and then it would, um, instead of having this, a sticky gel or a drink, it was like a gel drink. It was really weird, but um, oh. they didn't, I've never seen them since the past two years. Young for that, Gary. It, was, it didn't work out. <laughs> in the 80s. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we talk a little bit now? We, you said in the beginning of the podcast that you'd halved your mileage <clears throat> uh, now um, to preserve the body. What does a normal week look like for you now training-wise? Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, Mondays is normally I just go on the bike for however long I want, really. Um, depends on the weather. If I'm re really tired, I'll just go on my road bike. If I've got a bit of energy, probably mountain bike while I'm mountain training because it's more specific. Um, and a bit like the time goes a bit quicker on that because it's just a bit more fun, isn't it? Um, so I'll do that on a Monday. So anywhere between, I guess, like two and five max and that probably is it that's only if i've probably out and having a coffee stop and stuff but it's always very like re relaxed um and it feels really nice actually because normally sundays is a long run day um and then so then tuesdays i'll probably do a session so like tomorrow will be like my mountain session and i normally like go between like either doing long hill reps or short hill reps um obviously if i'm somewhere where there's bigger hills like the lake district i'll go for a longer hill like a pull tempo or something um and then on wednesdays it would be like i just go on the walk bike in the morning and then in the evening i'll do like a hilly run maybe like six miles yeah. um and i normally do my gym on that day as well just it ends up being quite long actually because my, the, my strength and conditioning coach just adds more and more so like because you get mobility and then plyometrics and then proprioception and that's just the, that's like the warm-up and that takes me like 45 minutes and then the whole gym which i do quite heavy weights um yeah. you know like we have, we have olympic weight thing which i've built up over time and that's that's so about an hour and a half of gym on the wednesday oh uh, that makes my 15 minutes of yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I, think it, I think it would be quicker if I didn't have my phone with me. And this like, is <laughs> I have to remove the phone, otherwise yeah. Yeah. I get tired between a rep and then I start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You say that you have to have that rest between because otherwise you you know you lose the strength. <laughs> um, and then Thursdays will be um, similar, I guess, unless I've not had a rest day in ten days because I only normally have a rest day every ten days. So, but. Thursday will be similar. I'll do like a bike in the morning and then um, run in the afternoon. And then um, Friday, uh, Fridays, I'll, I'll probably do like a, a session again. So like a, a fast road session. Um, and I probably like still am in about 34 minute 10K shape. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I was going to ask that, what whether the mountains had slow me down uh yeah yeah you lose like your zip so you find the leg turnover that's yeah I just, I just don't feel like quite springy um, i do wear like the the um carbon shoes in training just mainly like mainly to save the legs because we get such a bad i was really against them to begin with but um yeah i do wear them in training so that it's fun it preserves my legs and makes me feel a bit better about the session because you can fast <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I, th I think we're gonna do a few r road r races like after um is also but yeah I, I try and stay in about 34 minute 10k yeah. shape and um i think damien all he mentioned he has an eye on his kind of 10k pace uh constantly throughout the season i think just so he, he knows yeah. what he's at. he doesn't kind of turn away from the speed yeah it's, it's good to know the way you where you're at with your fitness it's hard to measure it otherwise on on the on the hills i guess um uh, and I guess I want to keep that as a strength um, yeah, when I'm mountain running um, so that I can, I can always have that confidence that I've got that speed at the end. Um, so yeah, Friday will be that and then, uh, or, or, or Friday or Saturday will be that and then it'll be like um, just like an hour run or something on Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday will be like the long run. And it depends yeah. where I am in the build up to the long races. So like, uh, yes, like, at this weekend it was nine, 19 20 miles just in the hills really easy um i try i try and get about eight to ten thousand feet in a week okay um, overall can you how do you how where where you are from out your door can you get some hills in would you have to travel for that uh yeah so the peak district is not great i can though if you put, if you really plan the route really carefully but you just don't get these long climbs so mm. but i'm not i'm probably about an hour and a half from the lake district so when i was training for scaffold yeah. i try and get there like once a week and i was doing some fell races there so that like i could link in um that but yeah generally i have to kind of like drive at least a little bit so yeah um it's not too easy from here it would be easier to live in the lakes but again it's a bit remote yeah <laughs>
Wi-Fi is not great. It sounds like you've got the balance really well now. And it almost, when you're talking earlier about like your struggles with the road marathons and then breaking down, and it's a heart, heart, it was a heartbreaking tale, but it's kind of led you to where you are now. Mm. And I just know that you're going to go on to amazing things on the trail and also have a sustainable training program. And hopefully, you know, you still be really active when you're an old person like me and Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so important, isn't it, that we don't break ourselves when we're in our yeah. when we're young because we yeah. can, and then not be able to be active when we're older, or yeah. put or have hip replacements on the NHS. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. You mentioned about a rest day, so, so that'd be every ten days you you would take a, you would take a rest day. Yeah, yeah, like quite strictly actually, because I I remember like after a few injuries, I'd kind of look back and be like, oh shit, I hadn't had a rest day for whatever three weeks. Yeah. Um, and I'd be like, well, no wonder. Because <laughs> the thing is, if I don't feel terrible. I never feel like, you know, like I'm running too much at the time. But yeah. you don't know how your bones are feeling, I suppose. I didn't tell you, so can't <laughs> can't be sure. Um, so, yeah, ten, every 10 days. And, you know, I, I actually enjoy my rest days now. So, um, I'm a rest day. Get your jeans on. Have a shower. That's it, isn't it? You, you put your civilian, you put your civvies on for the day. Yeah. Do you have a favorite trail? Do you have a favorite trail workout? You know, if that's on the plan. Um, I just love a good long uphill tempo. Actually, my favorite is just running up Skiddle. I just love. I just yeah. love running up there. I remember once I might like a key session I did before Scaffold was I just ran up Skiddle twice. Yeah. Um, which is try like twenty miles twice um, yeah, yeah, down, yeah. people walking up there were like <laughs> just absolutely like gobsmacked that someone would, a what run up there and b do it twice so <laughs> i used to get asked quite often by people who were huffing and puffing about halfway up asking how far the top was away and we still got another two out of two miles to go and if you're yeah. walking you're probably 40 minutes away and you can just see this despair on their faces and then yeah. we go, i wouldn't i wouldn't be running up skidor but i'd be moving quick quicker than quicker than those yeah. guys yeah, so actually, if you live low, if you live the lakes, you've got like it's I suppose from Keswick to it's five mile pretty much from the New Hall to mm. Skidor. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good workout. Go up there twice, it's quite runnable as well, and quite safe in terms of when you're running down. Yeah, um, terrain's not too bad, so like you're not going to injure yourself. So, yeah. yeah, so that's probably my favorite to go and do. Skidor, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've been so there. what, um, you've got you've been selected to represent GB at the in Thailand, that well-known trail running uh, <laughs> in February, over the 40k distance. I guess that's your next kind of big goal after next week. Yeah. And then after that, any bucket list races, anything? Where, um, do, you, where do you see this going? It's oh. hard to say, really, because it's obviously Thailand's still not confirmed because of COVID. They're going to confirm in November whether they they're gonna go ahead because it's already been postponed um so i've just been you know watching the covid vaccination rates and the figures of thailand and they're now off the red list for the uk which is good um yeah. <laughs> and it's whether i completely move away from road running as well or whether i per periodize it so i think um robbie simpson does a bit of both doesn't he yeah um but it's just getting the timings right um but because I don't know trail running that well, there's no bucket list things. It's just kind of taking opportunities as they present, I guess, and going with the flow. <laughs> I think that's the best. I think that's the best thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any recommendations? Nothing more than a marathon. <laughs> oh, there's heaps out here. There's heaps of amazing marathon distance. You know, 40k, but with 10,000 meters of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's so many like out and. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, I mean, um, got so excited and knocked my table over. I'm thinking, oh, what can I recommend you to do? But I mean, literally, like every weekend around here, there's like amazing trail races, and yeah. you can discover. Or you don't need to do like the massive big ones. Obviously, you do to you know for the sponsorship and and for if you want a really competitive race. But there's so many great places, and that's what I think is so wonderful about trail running is that it can take you yeah. to the most amazing places that you'd never go otherwise. Yeah, that's right. Whereas if you, I, get, I got invited to races for road running, and you'd end up like, oh my God, I went to Morocco once, and I was like, where are we? It was just like so barren. <laughs> um, so yeah, it takes you much nicer places. When I went to that one in Switzerland, my mind was like blown. I was like, oh my God, what is this? 
I just think um, you'll ha- I can, yeah, it'll be exciting to see sort of where you lead and whether, you know, ultra, the ultra distance. I mean, I wouldn't go near it if I had your speed. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> cool. All right. Gary, do you want to? Yeah, some of these are already been, uh, maybe not been answered, but yeah, the quick fire ones. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Road or trail? Trail. Trail. Yoga or weights? Weights. Um, I think I know what this one has been answered. Night or day shift? <laughs> day. <laughs> <clears throat> Unless you're on psychiatry nights, because those you get to sleep on, and that means you get paid to sleep. So. All oh, right. <laughs> See, I said she might have something interesting. Gary didn't like that one. He's like, oh, no one's going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this for scones, Eddie? You, yes. you, you, okay, well, first of all, is it scone or scorn? Oh, um, I don't know now when I've thought it. I, I can't say it naturally without thinking. I think probably scone. <laughs> no, scone. Scone. No, I don't know. <laughs> and on your scone, would you put your jam or your cream first? Oh, I can never remember the the Cornish Ray because Sarah's <laughs> from Devon, my wife's from Devon, and neither of us can remember which way is meant to be right. But let me think what I'd actually do. So I would, I think that I'd do it the Devon way, unfortunately. I think I'd put the cream and then the jam. I'm a cream. Oh, no. Go for you, Eddie. <laughs> we're Where's heathens. The jam on the cream, then. It's... Yeah, the cre- I dollop it. Balance the cream on top of the jam, I think. I don't know. But that's the Cornish way. Of... The cream. <laughs> <laughs> current favorite it does not be netflix it could be amazon or disney but yeah are you binge watching anything at the moment um we just binge watch rubbish like goggle box and um i don't i watched last night the dragon back race <laughs> you know oh, the movie I one. Seen that. was it good yeah really good i know russell bentley from a few years back so i wanted to sort of watch because he came second in it but yeah it's really it's really well filmed actually just incredible that race oh yeah so there's one there's one for the bucket list so you need to take a year <laughs> off hey, to recover yeah oh yeah that's nowhere near my bucket list <laughs> and um, if you remember what's the most weight you have eaten in a day uh i couldn't say an exact figure but 12 or 13 how many in the one pack that's a whole packet that is that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> for some reason i like eating them when i'm hung over as well so like on those days get through loads i don't think uh, my my middle child comes down in the morning and i'm like how many and he says oh, i'm gonna start with six <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll go from there mum yeah you should get a wee big sponsor that's the, they do that thing where the fisherman does the submarine you could have a few wee bix and go and run up skidoo twice <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Get them in. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, well, I've had a blast. Thanks for coming on. I'm sure our thank listeners would love that. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'm sure you've inspired everybody to put a little bit of speed work maybe into their yeah. uh, into their <laughs> trail, knowing that they don't always need to run lots of miles. Miles on the bike are... Uh, That's pretty refreshing, actually. So uh, refreshing. I must admit. So thank you so much. Best of luck. Um Going out to resort and fingers crossed that the World Trail Championships happens. Yeah, we'll be your biggest fans. (laughs) Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Enjoyed that, Eddie. Um, Skidor Hill repeats. How do you fancy that? Oh my goodness me! That's yeah, I did. Big... I'd probably do that before breakfast, Gary. To be honest, yeah, with your twirl. Oh my. How goodness. about yeah? Just take my twirl. <laughs> How high is Skidor? How much climb? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I know from New Hall to the top's five mile. Um, I don't think she'd be doing it. She may be doing it from the car park, uh, which gives you kind of your that that trig area. I know she prefers LT as a name, but I always I felt a bit uncomfortable saying LT. So I was always... <laughs> well, it's our first meeting, wasn't it? Maybe next time, you know, a bit more buddies, you'd be able to, you can ask her what she would prefer to be called. But super exciting that she did so well in that, um, in the Golden Trail Series races. And now she gets to go onto the world stage and compete yeah. with, wow, the top trail runners in the world. So um, really exciting for her. First, the World Trail Championships in thailand in yeah. february and then she'll get to really try hand and i think for somebody who's worked so hard and been um you know so persevering 
perseverance, persevering yeah. with trials and tribulations of injury to then find her niche in this sport yeah. um, is amazing to see. So we wish her all the success. And hopefully this time next year, we'll have her back on the podcast. She'll be yeah. so sponsored and glorified by then. <laughs> but as the Golden Trail Series winner. That leg speed she has from the road to the trail, it's really good to, really good to see. But and that would be awesome, actually. mindset as well. She's super tough. Yeah. And yeah. but also brings with it such a sense of humor and a kind of like an enjoyment, which is so needed. Coming up this week, the White Rose Ultra. Gary's written this. You simply follow this amazingly well marked 30 mile route, 31.4 to be exact, doing one or two laps around the, fa the fabulous Cone Valley in God's own county, Yorkshire, at the heart of Great Britain. Did you write that, Gary? I copied that and pasted that. <laughs> Have you done this? The white no, 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 I should do it. It <laughs> sounds way. like you're the advert for it. <laughs> and then we no. also got down for uh, the Wendover Woods 50 mile ultra run by Centurion, 10,000 feet. It's five lots of 10 mile laps, 50 Oof. miles. Uh, lots of ups, lots of downs. You'd like that one, Gary. Yeah. I really need to get down south uh, and do one of the You Centurion. name the race, I'll get you an entry, Gary. They're like big on my radar. They said every time, every you, week I hear about Centurion. You say right? that, and then yet you're stuck up north. I know. <laughs> I'm Just lazy. You. <laughs> yeah. So, but, oh, over in the lakes again, my favorite place, Kong Winter Trail, our oh, Feld Series kicks off on Saturday with the two rigs. Uh, yeah, around about the Kes Keswick area, this. And if you want to enter the race series, head over to kongadventure.com. They've got a shop in Keswick, but they've also got a website. £10 a race to bargain, isn't it? I don't think you're going to get T-shirts and medals. Um, but cake. Good. bet you get cake. I, I think if you enter the whole series too, you get a fiver off, so get a wiggle on and uh, do that. But what is good value for me? I, I've talked about three cross-country um, fixtures this year. I think there's about seven in total. And uh, most clubs, luckily for a Sedfield, put the bill for the, their athletes. But I think even if you pay yourself, it's about five, for five quid for about seven, which in effect the trail races, usually around nice parks um, and stuff like that. So go to your local running club and join up and do some super cheap work, hard workout cross countries. And another a very favourite of mine is the Newcastle Tower Moor Marathon and the half marathon. <clears throat> it's pretty exposed on the moor. And at this time of year, am I going to say, if it is windy, it is not a fun a fun day out. But you do. I don't know if they took the cows off the moor. They, it's pretty much in the city centre, um, but just a little bit outside, I suppose. But um, yeah, they, you, you see some uh, cows up on the moor. And sometimes they're still there, sometimes they're not. <laughs> but, <laughs> Newcastle Town Moor, it's the first marathon I ever enjoyed. It was... Because it was so low key, you just park, walk up. There's about there's about seventy people there when I did it or something, and I was very mindful. I'm just going to go at a certain pace. I didn't want to hit this hit the wall, and um, I did. It, I think it was whatever eight minute mile, nine minute mile. I can't what it was, but it was the first time I was just like metronome all the way through. As opposed to getting to eighteen mile, and then all of a sudden you kind of ship in thirty seconds a mile compared compared to where you um, first started. So yeah, tell me marathon half and the full on Sunday. Check it out. What have you got coming up, Eddie? More big, big mile. Actually, is this your last big week? Or have you got another big week before you start? Well, it's it's all I can think about is the next 48 hours. By the time this goes out live to our public, it'll all be over. I keep thinking about that. <laughs> it'll all be over soon, Eddie. It's just the anticipation. Um, so tonight I'm heading out in the dark. Ooh. In the cold because it's freaking snowing. It's not even nice snowing. It's like... Well, it's raining now. It's like a mixture between rain and snow. I think the word is sleet I'm looking sleet. for. Sleet for 35K or four hours, whichever one comes first, I've been okay, told. Okay. So yeah. do I go as hard as I can just to get <laughs> 35K done? Um, I think that's the plan. So I'm going to head out the door. I can't really plan a route because I tried to plan one yesterday, but then I ran into quite a bit of snow. Um, uh -huh. So I'm going to have to um, play it fast and loose tonight. So I'm going out to practice my head torch drills. Shout out to James Elson, who actually listened to the podcast last week and then messaged me saying how to use my head torch. <laughs> 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 top tips and tricks um thanks very much sorted that one out so i'm gonna go and practice my head torch my dark skills and drills um yeah, i'm gonna leave i think i'm gonna leave just before it gets dark 
dark. So yeah. like you kind of run into the dark, so I get my head torch out, put it on, and Great then effect. spend some hours basically running around with scaring the bejesus out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> do, do the clocks change in France like they do in England though? Yes. Yeah. So we've gone an hour back, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Um, I just so, know it's really dark. Yeah, it'll be really dark. Um, so I'm going to And then I'm going to come home. I'm going to give Bryn the half an hour warning to cook me some pasta, get back probably about nine, 10 o'clock, eat my pasta, go to bed. And then tomorrow morning, I've got to get up and I'm running five hours. <laughs> He'll tell you off. He was there, I was looking forward to my toilet, lady. What the hell? <laughs> He's still his toilet. He'll probably WhatsApp me when I'm like up a mountain, blowing a gale, <laughs> exhausted. Can't find my twirl. Where's my twirl? Uh, yeah, and then I'm going to do five hours tomorrow. Um, oh, let's get God. up, princess. <laughs> let's get oh. it up. Oi, oi, oi. So I'm starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, and that's going to be emotional. Wow. But I've got to, you know, it's good. Yeah. It's good, absolute race specific stuff. And, and that's, yeah, that will pretty much be. So I've had a quiet few days leading into it, and then I'll have a very quiet few days afterwards. Might be doing um, this one on my own next week, I think. <laughs> or from a bed. I'm not doing it this, this from a bed, so that's an improvement because we've had a few <laughs> yeah. shows lately from a bed, haven't we? Um, uh, and so that's big. So that that will be testing. It will be good to see, to practice all my... Because um, so much of this race is exactly going to be in these conditions. Yeah. So um, I think it will be really good. Like, I'm not bothered about the pace. I know I'm going to feel a bit tired because yeah, okay. I'm just coming to the end of this block, end of the year. Yeah. So it's just all going to be it's totally, it's probably going to be harder than the race in some ways. Yeah, yeah. Because you're out on your own. Um, you haven't really got a route as such. You're just basically trying to just count down the Ks. Yeah. Whereas once I start the race, every step, I'm like, off season, off season, off season. Just keep <laughs> on going to the skis. Um, but I need to do it for not just physically, but also a bit of mental. I love a bit of mental strength training. And I'll be cock a hoop once it's done. And then, yeah, plan Friday. Coach call is in the diary and we'll plan the taper. Because I guess I'll have a longer taper than you. You would, actually. Um, are you doing, like, have you got any marathon-paced efforts coming in? Oh, well, not, th not this weekend, actually. Um, I just checked uh, before I did the script, and it's two and a half hours in hot red the zone. The script. <laughs> before we gave the producers the script. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just two and a half hours in hot red, too, so that's super easy. The forecast is okay, actually. It's cloudy. So... Maybe I'll, I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, where I'm going to go. But, you know, I say two and a half hours. Um, so if I did like the coastal loop, it would take me out for longer than two and a half hours. It's just, it, it is, it is what it is. Um, so if I did an out and back on the moors somewhere, probably be three hours. I'm not really stressed. And then also, you know, if, say heart rate's on two, if you're on somewhere like the moors and you're moving uphill, then, or downhill, you could go to zone one, to zone three, to maybe even zone four. It just depends. So it's quite fluid like that. Um, there must be another marathon paced um session but it could only be next week and then for myself probably it's going to start getting easier with a two or three week uh taper um but for me the week uh for 25 i did that last night 25 minutes threshold run which was really good i enjoyed that but my I did post a picture because my vapor flies disintegrated. Um, oh, poor Gary. Yeah. That'll so learn I'm, you. When we get our Nike sponsor, Eddie, they can... Um, but I can't you complain. Never, I this... <laughs> ever buy anything from Nike. Well, yeah, you know, I do... 200 plus pound trainer. I do wrestle with uh, the whole Nike uh, machine. Yeah, not that hard though, do you? To endorse these shoes, my goodness me. So I bought them 2018. I never wore them. The first time I wore them, um, I ran the Amsterdam Marathon straight out of the box. No, never. Um, and they've been phenomenal. And only recently when I bought some new balance trainers, I've relegated these to my kind of training sessions. And uh, yeah, they kind of gave up last night there's a big chunk missing from the from from the soul <laughs> and then we've got the session over at Sedgefield I'm going to go over Sedgefield on Thursday I've got no idea what the session is you can't leave flexible. us hanging then on the trainers what are you going to do are you going to invest in a new pair do you need to start well, a GoFundMe know... page for these <laughs> trainers I um 
I'm going to get some new ones. I fancy some of them super duper Adidas ones. They're carbon plated. I might give them a go. I don't want to bore you too much, but I have a life insurance thing where I get half price trainers. If I'm active, it's quite a good perk. Yeah. So if you do exercise, good. you get points and then they, that unlocks um, half price trainers. And for the family of, I get four years because we've got a family of four. So. Half oh, price. Like, sorry, kids. You're right. You're in your clock. Start right. I'm well, there's no point buying kids trainers. Half, they, they're not expensive anyway. But these, yeah, super duper. Uh, you know, when you get two hundred pound pair of trainers, those New Balance ones I bought would have been two hundred ten pound. So Holy mega bucks. Yeah. So to get them half price is a big, a big deal. Um, so do that. Uh, what else? I think. Yeah, we got the. So I'm gonna go to Sedgefield on Thursday and do whatever session they have. They're pretty flexible, actually. So it might be, um, whatever, say 10 times 400 for argument's sake. Um, but there's varying kind of groups of ability. So some people do more, uh, some people do. We did a pyramid session, and Justin and I did, say, two 1200s instead of the one 1200 just to uh, increase Show it off. a bit. Yeah, just to flex a bit around the uh, <laughs> session. <laughs> we did flex get the, the end of Paul. Is that why you keep doing the strength? Because you're flexing. Nobody was noticing. Yeah, yeah what's Gary what's doing? guy doing over there? Match sticks. <laughs> Don't talk to him. <laughs> and I think oh, that is about it, really. Yeah. So feeling fit, feeling good. Cheer Charge have just bought out some new mini vegan and gluten-free flapjacks. I love the mini version of the Cheer Charge bars because yeah. I find the big ones a little bit intimidating unless it's a big ski day or I eat half and then I put it in my rucksack, forget about it, and the dog finds it and eats it. But the mini ones, that's just enough. That's that's just enough for that little bit of puck. I've actually got one packed for my long run um, this evening. Haven't tried out yet the vegan or the gluten-free flapjacks, but if they're anything like... Um, I lie. I have tried the, the vegan one. It was raspberry and something, I think. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. I had to actually box them away because I started it just eating them for pleasure. And yeah. that's a dangerous game to play because I feel you need to eat them when you're exercising. Yeah. But yeah, go and check them out. And if you would like a shout out on the show, you know, I'm going to say, Eddie, head over to iTunes. And can you leave a review on Spotify? I don't even know if you can, but... Um, Je ne sais pas, Je ne sais pas. I, don't check, I don't check Spotify. So if you want a shout out, five-star reviews only, please. So Open an to, iTunes account. You know, it's not... <laughs> head, over to, head over to Apple, uh, Apple Podcast, I think is its official name these days. That was episode 62. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. And let's run to the hills. Thank you.